I thought it was the memory of her brother. She needs to forget what happened last night. You want to erase the memory? Yeah, because I want to keep her alive. We can do it. We can take care of her. Or, you know, we'd just kill her. I like this alternative better. Welcome back. That was a look at the new sci-fi action thriller, Code 8, Part 2. Well, the high-octane Canadian film stars two of the country's most famous and hottest cousins, if I may say so myself. Please welcome to the social, Stephen and Robbie Amell. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> listen, get yourself out of this ditch. Code 8, part two. It's a sequel, obviously. Yeah. Um, and you both describe this as a passion project. So I'm going to start with you, Robbie. Start by explaining where this story picks up now. Uh, well, it's five years after part one. Part one's available on Netflix now, so if you need to catch up, that's fine. Go for it. <laughs> um, uh, it's been five years. My character has had a rough five years in prison, and Steven's character has had a... Uh, Pretty good five years building an empire with some shady people. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So the original uh, Code 8 was released in 2019, and actually that film raised over $2 million during an Indiegogo campaign. Yes. 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 Crowdfunding. Yes. So that's amazing. <laughs> Huge amount of interest, a huge fan base. So talk yeah. about, like, what does the experience of knowing that you have that kind of fan base and support going into it? Is that like, oh my God, it's just amazing? Or is it a bit like, whoa, scary? Well, it, the first one, it was scary. Yeah. Because we had over 35,000 backers. We sold, wow. one of the perks was a ticket to a premiere in a city. And we, we didn't know, we hadn't shot the movie yet. We didn't know when it was come out. So these people were buying a ticket to something in a city. It's like... It could be in 2019, it could be in 2022, we don't know. Right. So, uh, but people believed in us, and I think we delivered them something. Now all they have to do is go on Netflix and watch it, which again, we would suggest that you do, please, camera right there. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, we have the TIFF Lightbox Theater tonight, um, both theaters are sold out, and we have an idea of a way to recognize uh, the supporters from the first movie, because I guarantee you, there will be 150 to 200 of them there. Wow. wow. That is so cool. Yeah. So cool. Well, Code 8, the Code 8 franchise, it blends sci-fi, it blends action, uh, to which both of you, neither of you, are strangers to the genre. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, Arrow and The Flash, if I can add those to it. fun about getting to play in this genre? I wanted a superpower. <laughs> <laughs> Long eight years with no superpowers. We, uh, that's, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. His first question was, do I have powers? Because <laughs> I think that the original answer was no. And I was like, no, but what superpower do I have? <laughs> <laughs> um, in the film, you've created this vast world that's set in this uh, fictional place called Lincoln City. Mm -hmm. And yet, I, I, I was saying you backstage, it's so uh, anyone who lives in Toronto, you'll be happy to notice, like, oh, I see, I see recognizable landmarks. Yeah. Um, but we just were thinking outside of that, if you guys could have a superpower crossover event mm -hmm. with a character from another universe, um, visit your town. Who, who would it be, or why? <laughs> Gus, Gus Frank. Gus Frank. We were talking about oh, this earlier. Yeah. Yeah. We, we just went to, uh, Steve knows him. I met yeah. him for the first time, and uh, um, I was a little starstruck. I'm a huge Breaking Bad fan. Same. And uh, we were in Vancouver. We went to the Canucks game with him. We were there for Fan Expo and doing some Code 8 stuff, and he is awesome. He's not Speaking a super villain in real life. No, no, Giancarlo Esposito is the opposite of Gus Fring. Yeah. So we don't want him to be Giancarlo. No, we want Gus. We want <laughs> Gus. <laughs> By the way, I, I hope we can use this clip in, like, okay. five years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so like we mentioned, this isn't the first time the two of you have worked together. I, I feel like it could either work or not work when you work with family. So what do you think, th what it is it about this partnership that makes it work so well? Well, we, we have a really nice, we have a really nice shorthand. Um, you know, when you, when you watch a, a television show or a movie, and you think to yourself, you know, it looks like those people really like each other in real life. That's because they do. 
The opposite is also true. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but you know, we have a, we have a nice shorthand, and I also I, I feel like I can annoy him if I want. That's good. That's good. Because it's family, right? Yeah. 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 Um, Cousin drama. Speaking of family, if we have both of you here, we thought we could have a little bit of fun, maybe diving into the family album per se, uh, the archives, and have some fun with some albums. So oh, we're boy. we're gonna take this way back. We're gonna show you some photos from the archives. You're gonna tell us what's going on, okay? Oh, sure. Um, all right, so first up, we are taking it way back. Robbie. Oh, oh I remember this. What I is this? What's going on? I remember this photo so well. Vividly. <laughs> um, yeah, he's, uh, I don't remember this at all. <laughs> It's actually my, my, it's the picture that pops up if he phones me, though. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Did you know that? No. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like I'm about to throw you as a bowling ball. That's what it looks really like. Cute. Okay, Stephen, can you tell us about this day? Oh, man, that was during, uh, that was during season three of Arrow, and Robbie was filming The Flash at the same time, and we snapped that photo and made it look like we were shooting an episode together when we absolutely were not. Yeah. Wow. The amount of people that said, do not post that photo anywhere. <laughs> really? Yeah. They didn't say that to me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't think I'll have to. Oh, okay, man. Okay, uh, this is the last one. This is a larger than life moment. Steven, uh, talk to us about this. Oh, oh man. Is? So we have been on this press tour. It started in Orlando to Vancouver to New York and, and finishing up in Toronto. And our partners on the press tour, Netflix, uh, Lauren and Lindsay, who've been with us the entire time, they bought a bunch of banners at Megacon in Orlando. And um, between that, between our Times Square billboard, between seeing us in, in Dundas Square today, Netflix has been the most amazing partner. And I think that the thing that we're most excited for and the thing that's going to really be the icing on the cake is the premiere tonight. Yeah. Amazing. So excited. Okay, listen. <laughs> It's, I heard through the grapevine that perhaps you're going to be involved in a Suits spinoff called uh, Suits L.A. Yeah. Any chance you can tell us a little bit about it? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the, it's, the, it's the same uh, creative team, uh, Aaron Korsh, and uh, his producing partner, Dave. Um, it's, it's, it's great. I'm excited. Nope. <laughs> to try. Robbie, Steven, what a pleasure to have both of you. All right, listen up. Listen up, Code 8 Part 2. It streams globally on Netflix starting on February the 28th. Are you going to watch? Yes. Hey there, what did you think? Drop your comments below and join the conversation. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you can find more on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. See you soon.